What's up everyone, Chris here, coming to you from Salty Island HQ. Today I'm coming to you with this beautifully painted army. Now, first thing I want to note is that this army is not mine. Now, I am a veteran of the Long War. I have struggled through the Dark Times. Fourth edition, all of us true followers of the Dark Powers have been rewarded in the 8th edition with fantastic rules and I feel like they really enable all of the players to bring out the true flavor of each of the legions and even within the legion themselves allow you to really diversify and bring out the style that most suits you. Like I said, this isn't my army and I myself am blessed that I have roommates that all hobby as well which one, gives me the ability to play a lot of games against people even during the quarantine and two, it allows me to show off lots of different models that I myself would never get around to painting. So without holding up any longer, let's take a look at a strong contender for the saltiest legion of the last 10,000 years, Iron Warriors. Now a couple of things about this army, like I said, one, this isn't mine. But the other thing that's important to note about it is this army is not actually everything that the owner has for this army. This is just everything that is currently painted for this army. There's obviously a few key gotta have models. You look at your demon prints. There's probably gonna be some Havoc squads. I mean, it is an Iron Warriors army. Unfortunately, for those of you whose beards are long, and you're also old enough to remember what that reference is about, Iron Warriors can no longer take things like Basilis. I'm sure that none of us really miss that. But what they can take still is tons and tons of obliterators. Again, something else that the owner still doesn't have painted at this moment, but we will be revisiting this army once the rest of it does get painted so you can take a look at all of it. Now this army currently as it stands sits at about a little bit over 800 points. Again, this is how I would configure them, and also assuming that we're going with WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. So let's go ahead and take a closer dive in and take a look at each of the units. First up, we've got the troop choices. Now, as everyone knows, Chaos Marines get a little bit more flexibility. You can do some really fun things with them, and in particular, this unit here is rocking the Mark III armor, so showing its true age as veterans of the Long War. On the left, we've got two plasma guns. One of the nice things about the Chaos Legions is you can sneak in that second plasma special weapon. And then the Aspiring Champions got the plasma pistol and power fist combo. Pretty classic, pretty standard. One of the other things that you can do with the Legions is you can combine your two 10-mans. You can go one 20-man squad if you wanted to, kind of harkening back to the days of the 30k and the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy itself. But right now I've got it split up here and the reason is, is this second squad is rocking bolt pistol, chain swords, two melta guns, and the aspiring champion has the power fist and a combi melta combo going on on that one. Again with the Mark III armor, really showing off the lore behind this army really nicely done. I'm going to hold up this model here so you guys can get a good look at it. This is a really nicely done model here. No Iron Warriors force will be complete without a proper warp smith. And this one has got all the good stuff on it as you can see. And in this instance we currently have him set up as the Warlord with the new Faith and Fury book. The Iron Warriors and all the Legions got a nice, really nice power boost in terms of the fluffiness and the creativity that you can go. For the Relic, I personally really like the Techno Venomous Mechadendrites, Mechadendrils, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, very fluffy and also very powerful, basically giving you four attacks that if you just hit, immediately deal a mortal wound. No roll to wound necessary, no toughness is going to stop it, doesn't even matter. Um, with that said, I believe they have the Axe of the Forge Master, which is a pretty solid contender in my opinion. And as you can see, that, that axe would definitely be worth it. In addition, as the Warlord, uh, you have access to the Warlord traits. My personal favorite being the Demonsmith. 
which I think you'll be able to see why with the rest of the army that we're going to be showing in a little bit. Honestly, Stoic Events has a very strong argument can be made for that one as well. Now for those of you veterans of the Long War, you will all know that no Iron War army is complete without maxing out your heavy support choices. And in fact, way back in the day, Iron Warriors could take more heavy support choices than anyone else. It was, it was pretty unfair. You're on my side, but you're still cheating quite a bit. Pretty much everyone can do it these days, and so there's no reason not to. First, we got a pair of Mauler Fiends. These are fantastic models. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up here so you can take a look at each one a little closer. The really well done in the Iron Warrior scheme. Got the hazard striping on it, really tying it into the rest of the Legion there. And then we've got this second one, obviously, as well. Painted, painted a little differently, just to make it stand out, but at the same time, clearly still matches up with the rest of the army. So, fantastically done. Really like these models a lot. And, and the models themselves are just incredibly cool. Filling out the third heavy support choice, we have the Forge Fiend. And I completely agree with the builder's choice of the three ectoplasma cannons. Fantastic weapons. And if you remember with the Warlord trait, basically allows them to reroll ones on the wound, which is actually really nice and not super easy to come by on Chaos without having to spend that command point. So, so really nice being able to get the reroll ones on this model. And obviously you should never go anywhere without your trusty metal box. Always good for blocking line of sight, hiding 10 marines in it, getting them up the field, driving this into someone's face to just annoy them. For 60 points, 60-ish 60 points, there's really not much better that you can spend it on once you've got your army together than your trusty metal box. And this one here got the hazard striping on it. Fantastic look. So there you go everyone, that is 800 points of Iron Warriors. Hope that you guys enjoyed taking a look at this army. So it's actually kind of cool. I don't actually think that the owner took this army and played it anywhere. As I mentioned, it's not entirely painted yet. There's a few pieces still left to go. But as of right now, here's what's done. Beautifully painted army. Hope to bring this to you guys in a battle report. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. We actually have a couple of friends who are fantastic painters. I'm looking forward to featuring their work as well. So if you like this, let me know in the comments down below that you'd like to see more content like this. And in fact, if you are in the Las Vegas Henderson area and you'd actually like to let us show off your army for you, definitely hit me up with the email down below. Be more than happy to have you over so we can get some cool shots of your army, represent the community. Thank you all for taking the time. Until next time, iron within, iron without.